What is going on, everyone? Chris with Journals, Comments of Pop Culture. I was asked this question the other day, and I thought I'd make a video, and that is, what is a speculator? Guys, before I get into it, please take some time to subscribe if you haven't done so yet. That being said, guys, what is a speculator? This is something that has been a controversial topic uh, for, for, for years in the comic book hobby um, you know, the, the, the term speculator usually comes with negative uh, attributes to it to where we are put off by this term. Me personally, if you watch my channel, you know that I'm not. Um, I appreciate every uh, uh, s variable uh, that an individual uh, uh, collects by. And if somebody is a speculator, I do not hate on them. But let's get down uh, to the, the, the bulk of, of what this means. What is a speculator? And I'm going to tell you guys right now, it's not going to be one clear cut boxed thing. Okay. But we'll get into that. And as you can see in the image, guys, it has investor versus speculator, because I am going to bring up a differentiation of between the two, and then I'm going to bring it all together. All right, guys. So let's move into this first. Let's look at what this states here about speculators okay uh, let's read it together a speculator takes a view of the market and accepts the market's risk in pursuit of a profit okay prior to the transaction the speculator has no risk exposure let me give you guys an example we get a, an announcement of a character like say virus right and the speculators can do multiple things they can assume that this character is going to be hot, right? And, and, and by assuming this, by speculating on the market, there's, there's no risk involved. And even the, the risk involved uh, initially can be very small because what does it say next? After the transaction, the speculator has increased risk, ex risk exposure. So let's take example for this. Say you make a transaction by showing up on new new comic book Wednesday and you buy five to ten copies off the shelf at cover price. You prepared yourself by speculating on something and still that risk is small because you're not putting a lot of money into it. But once that, that the, the dollar amount grows and grows and, and uh, the, the speculative value uh, increases monetarily on a certain book, your risk exposure is going to continue to increase. Moving on, though, it does say the profits, losses of a speculative transaction are not known immediately. OK, so I'm sure that you guys can agree that looking at these four points, it speaks to those that want to hop onto a book, especially a new book. Right. This is a book that hasn't hit the market or that has just hit the market. Or the same thing could be said for books that are sitting uh, that are kind of being overlooked, that are already released, say they can even be Silver Age or Bronze Age books, and somebody's speculating on them because of something that hasn't happened yet. Okay? Movie hype. Right? Um, let's dive into this quote here by John Maynard Keynes. A speculator is one who runs risk of which he is aware. An investor is one who runs risk of which he is unaware. Okay? You may read this and it may be kind of perplexing and maybe like, wait, that's kind of backwards, isn't it? Because is, doesn't the investor invest knowing that there's a risk? Let me try to break down what this means, okay? We're going to come back to that. I first want to look into this comic here, uh, this meme type image. Um, now, take this with a grain of salt because there's something in here that I don't really agree with, but it really kind of paints a, a cool picture. Uh, it says the gadget price went up from $100 to $200. So we're just using an example here. Mr. Speculator says, hmm, the price has been going up and there seems to be heavy buying. I will buy it at $200 later. I should be able to sell to a bigger fool for $250. Now, I don't agree with calling anybody a fool, but you get kind of what it's saying. Mr. Investor says, after my analysis, I am quite sure that the real value of the gadget is around $100. It's not a good idea to buy this current market price of $200 despite the current market trend. Now, this correlates back to uh, that, that quote, but 
I'll get back into that. Let's look at Mr. Gambler. And I like bringing the gambler into this, guys. OMG, I need to buy that gadget now before it's too late. Everyone is buying it, so this must be up for something. What does that sound like? FOMO, right? Fear of missing out. <laughs> Let's go back to this quote. A speculator is one who runs risks of which he is aware. An investor is one who runs risks of which he is unaware. Now, anyone that invests in something obviously better know that there's uh, there's risks involved. You know, that's why when you look at the stock market, you can get uh, you could get into a conservative portfolio or a more risky portfolio. Right. But I think what this what this quote is saying is we don't really know what it looks like, whereas a speculator, there is such a high risk factor. Right that you are more aware of the risk that you were taking. And it goes to this piece right here. An investor looks long-term and understands uh, the viability of the market. Because in this example, the Mr. Investor says, I am confident because of my research that this price is bloated. It's not smart for me to invest right now. I think the true fair market value is, is this. I'm not going to pay that, so I'm going to wait, right? The speculator says, look, I'm going to go all in and I'm just going to try to flip it to someone else that's going to pay a bigger, bigger price or a larger price, right? You're taking that risk immediately. And it goes back to this right here. A speculator takes a view of the market and accepts the market's risk in pursuit of profit regardless right? So once you make that transaction, the speculator has, has increased that risk exposure extremely. And this is what it boils down to for me, especially when we look at something like this, guys. Now, I'm not putting these terms into a box at all, and I'm going to break that down because I'm going to tell you guys right now, I am a little bit of all these. But before I get into that, I'm going to make this statement and say this, guys. I would really look at the speculator as being a short-term investor, and the investor is a long-term investor, okay? They're really, the investor is looking at that long-term, probably balancing uh, risk exposure with more of a conservative investment where you are uh, more confident in earning an increase on, uh, on return and investment over the long-term, okay? The speculator is more concerned with getting that return on investment for the short term. And usually always, whatever you're investing in, even the stock market, when you're looking for that short term investment you're and you're looking to flip, you're going to take higher risks. So what does that speak to those people that, you, you know, uh, say that, uh, you know, I'm mad because I... Did, wasn't able to get this book when it was cover price and now it's hot. Well, you could put yourself in one of these categories. What are you? Are you a gambler and you missed out and you're having like, you know, gamblers, uh, you know, like you, 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 like you're a, you're a fiend and you missed out on that fix, right? And you're just fiending for that fix. Or are you investors saying, man, I'm upset because I wasn't able to get it at that low price to where I can uh, the affordability of it can still be low where I could sit on it long term. Or are you really a speculator that's just mad because now you can't flip it, right? But let me tell you something, guys. This is why putting people in boxes is not good for the hobby. I am a little bit of all of these, guys. I'm a little bit of all of them. But more than anything, I'm Mr. Investor right here because I'm not willing to take huge risks. I'm not somebody that's going to go out there and buy Venom 26 for... 50 to hundred dollars or whatever it is, I can care less. Okay. And I'm not saying that these new hype books that are modern books aren't going to have a long-term value. I do think they're going to have an ebb and flow. I think they're going to dip more than say your, your, you know, what you call blue chip keys that are from the silver or bronze or copper age, but it's just not for me. These variants are just not for me to spend 50 to a hundred to 200 dollars on. I, I don't as an investor, I'm not looking to put that much money up front on something that I am unaware of the value for the long term. And that goes back to this quote, the risk of which he is unaware. I'm unaware of the long term risk involved in, in these uh, 
modern books that are that are hyped up, whether it's because of movie hype or new character hype or just because it's a one in twenty five or a one in one hundred variant, right? Um, but that's the bulk of what I am. But I, guys, don't get it twisted. I am a speculator. I enjoy speculating on uh, the possibility of either books getting hot because of movie hype or or because it's just a new hot character. Hey, look, I'm willing to do it. Um, let, let, let me give an example. You know, when, when The Moon Knight uh, was released, I was a little late to the party on getting that Moon Knight number one, but I still got it for uh, under, under 30 bucks. I think it was like, uh, what was it, $20 plus shipping? Um, for probably a very fine and near mint copy. And I'm good with that. I'm good with that. I think the book has increased uh, still some since I, I purchased it. And I have a feeling that once we get a, a trailer and once the show comes out, uh, that is the Moon Knight Disney Plus show that I'm talking about, that book's going to continue to go up. That's a speculator in me. I'm taking the risk. I know the risk that's there and I'm taking it. And although I'm not in it for the short term flip, See, that's where I'm taking the risk as a speculator, but I'm in it for the long-term return on investment as an investor. So you see how they kind of interlap? Now, I'm a gambler too, guys. I'm a gambler. But I'm the type of gambler that'll go into the casino with $20 in my pocket. And that's it. That's it. I'm not going into a casino with a hundred, with a thousand or five thousand dollars in my pocket trying to gamble it all away. No, nah, no, nah, I'll I'll gamble uh you you know, ten, twenty dollars here and there. Uh, maybe, you know, like I bought, um, I bought a, uh, $40 Mayhew, uh, Venom number one. I, th I think it was a Keras exclusive, uh, uh, ASM 300 cover swipe for 40 bucks. I, I think that's the only comic variant exclusive that I've purchased, you know, outside of like, you know, four or five, six dollars for whatever. Uh, and I bought it, but I, so that's kind of a gambler in me, but at the same time, that's a collector in me. And that's what you don't see up here. The collector in me bought it and was still willing to pay the $40 because I just loved the cover so much. So I'm just trying to give examples, guys, as to how we can fall under each of these categories. And we don't need to hate on the next person for being one of these. Okay. Um, I do believe the majority of collectors have a little bit of all these in them. Um, and look, when it comes to more of what the speculator is, guys, I've made videos about it before. I'm not going to dive into it right now because that's not what this video is about. And that's addressing those that think that speculators are bad for the hobby. I think in more than one way, probably, and I'm just throwing a random number out there, guys, this isn't a factual percentage, but I'm going to assume that 90% of collectors have some for a, uh, some form of speculator within them. They have some percentage of a speculator within what they do and how they collect. Now, so just because somebody has more speculator in them doesn't mean that they aren't true collectors or, and it doesn't mean that they're ruining the hobby. And I'm not going to get into why I believe that they're not ruining the hobby here. You know, a part of me wants to because I'm probably going to get some comments stating, well, speculators are in the hobby. And I want to, again, solidify my point saying, no, they are not. But you guys, you can go watch you can go watch my other videos where I talk about that to, 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 to hear uh, my point. So I know you are wrong. Um, are there uh, is is any industry in, in any market impacted by the decisions of speculators, investors and gamblers and just hobbyists in general? Absolutely. Are there negative impacts and positive impacts? Absolutely. All the time. Nothing's perfect. But ultimately, all these elements are what make the hobby what it is. They are what make the hobby fun. They are what make the they are what makes the hobby uh have in, in investability. And I don't even know that's an actual word, but the <laughs> investability, right, of the hobby. Um basically the ability to make it a hobby worth investing in is what I'm trying to say, right? I think I might have just made up a word there, but I hope you guys get my point. All of these things make the hobby what it is. Uh, they make it a lucrative market and they make it fun at the same time. And uh, look, there's there's a, a market within comic books for all of us. 
uh, whether we have low budgets, small budgets, limited budgets, medium budgets, or endless budgets, whether we want to speculate, invest, gamble, or just collect to read or collect to art or collect for whatever reason. Uh, I hope that this video, guys, uh, broke this down, gave you a little bit more insight on what speculator is and means to the hobby of combo book collecting. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you have any questions still, uh, please let me know your thoughts. And if you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, guys, again, please do so. Road to 3,000. Thank you guys for watching. And until next time.